In this particular video, we're going to look at some trig inverse functions and also how to find their derivatives. And I know this is probably going to be uh, a little complicated at first. I know the algebra is for sure. Uh, so hang tight as we go through this. And you know, those of you who have had pre-calc and trigonometry classes in the past, you know that the arc sine or sine to the negative one is the inverse sine of x. And in some classes, they may get a little particular on, uh, you know, the capitalization of this A. I think if it's a capital A, then they mean strictly within the first quadrant and a very positive value from my recollection. Uh, if that's not factual, then I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, Sine inverse of x is something that we know um, from pre-calc and, and trig as well. And probably stretching back to geometry, you did a little bit of work with that, especially when you were doing problems involving the law of sines and the law of cosines. So the idea here is that you're looking at the angle whose sine is x. Okay. Now, think about this for just a moment as I kind of switch colors and go off to the side here. Previously, whenever we do a sine function, usually we take the sine of some angle and it ends up equaling a value of some kind. You probably get some kind of value, like typically from the unit circle, if it's one of those spokes on the unit circle wheel that we know. So that's, that's what happens when we do the forward function, as I like to call it. Now, think about this. When you do an inverse, you are effectively switching the domain and range of a function. And the reason why this works is because we have to limit the domain of the sine function, or excuse me, limit the range of the sine function in order to be able to pin down one particular domain. There's, there's a few more rules that go along with it having to do with uh, passing the horizontal line test and so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into those in this video because I, th I think they're a little bit more complicated than what we want to get into for our purposes. But um, if you're going to switch the domain and the range to come up with an inverse, then a sine inverse will take a value from the unit circle and it should return the angle. Okay, so the idea is when you do a sine inverse, I'm giving you the value on the unit circle. It's up to you to come up with the angle. All right, so let's let's kind of see if we can process these that are on the bottom of the slide here. Um, if you're thinking about an arc sine of negative one half, um, well, this is this is going to be the angle whose sine is negative one half. Now this is a little tricky because there's more than one angle uh, whose sine is negative one half, and and if we start to think about it, it's either going to be um, negative pi over 6, or it's going to be 7 pi over 6, depending upon how you prefer. Uh, it's actually going to work out to be negative pi over 6 here. And the reason why that's the case is because when it comes to the sine inverse, you're only going to give an answer that's in between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So that is something that we need to strongly consider as we as, as we uh, remember how to handle the inverse of a uh, sine function. All right, so uh, our cosine of zero is going to be the angle whose cosine is zero, and that's going to be pi over two, and it's kind of an interesting little rule with the cosine as well. So uh, just to kind of sketch this out, for the sine, the arc sine, you need to be in quadrants, one and four. For the arc cosine, since it's positive in quadrants one and four, now we need to adjust that a little bit and you need to be worried about quadrants one and two. Okay, and when it comes to the arc tangent, we're going to do kind of the same thing as the sine, which is going to be quadrants one and four, and, and just kind of bearing in mind that the arctan of pi over 2 is indeed undefined, or tangent of pi over 2 rather is undefined, and tangent of 3 pi over 2 also undefined. 
so as we go and kind of process this one, um, the arc tan of root three, well, you gotta think about the angle whose tangent is root three. That may take you a moment or two to process and come up with pi over three or 60 degrees. Now, the arc secant is an interesting animal because we know that is going to be the, uh, the uh, related to the cosine here. So what I'd like to do is instead, I'd like to take the cosine inverse of the reciprocal of this thing. And if, if you flip them both out, you should be able to come up with a good answer here. Now, this one is not as easy to process until you rationalize the denominator and then stop and think about it, and it ends up being pi over four. All right, so for the last one here, the arc sine of 0 0.3, do you need to use a calculator? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, because we don't know what the value, uh, the exact value is for 0 0.3. What angle produces exactly 0 0.3 as a sign? Uh, so calculator definitely helpful in that situation. Okay, now that sort of leads us to this idea of finding the derivative of an inverse function here. Okay, so if f is a function that is defined at every point on some interval and df of dx is never zero on that interval, then f has an inverse and f inverse itself is differentiable at every point inside that interval. So more on this in another video, but for right now, just kind of know that as long as the derivative never goes to zero for a particular interval, then yes, that function has an inverse and it's differentiable. And again, we go back to some of those rules involving the horizontal line test in one to one. And, and, and we'll get into that uh, probably in more detail uh, a little bit later in this particular unit. Okay, now I'm going to just hand you these formulas. The proofs behind them are quite disgusting, uh, so we don't really need to worry too much about the proofs here. So the arc sine derivative is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared and then times u prime for the chain rule uh, with u being a differentiable function of x as we say in the box here. Okay, and we've got arc tan and the derivative of arc tan is going to be 1 over 1 plus u squared times u prime for the chain rule. And, you know, the proofs of these things involve some, you know, rather exotic substitution and really, really good knowledge of the functions themselves, a little bit of implicit differentiation, intrigue, suspense, murder. Okay, well, maybe just intrigue. And, and I have to tell you that it's not really, it's not really something I intend to put anybody through because some of those proofs even made me weep as a student, so we're, n we're not going to, we're just not going to go there. So uh, the derivative of arc secant is pretty ugly. It's going to be 1 over the absolute value of u, and then the square root of u squared minus 1, and then ultimately times u prime. So you can see why these three are going to be pretty intense. Uh, it's good to memorize them. It's really good to know them just because they might pop up when you least expect it. Um, but there is a bit of a good news here uh, when it comes to these three functions. If you memorize the derivative for arc sine, arc tangent, and of course arc secant, if you memorize those, then you should be in a good position to know these other three very easily. So sine and cosine are clearly related to each other, and their uh, derivatives are just going to be opposites in this case. So if the derivative of arc sine is this complete mess right here, then the derivative of the arc cosine is that same complete mess, just with a negative sign in front. So it's the square one, negative one over the square root of one minus u squared times u prime. Okay, not any necessarily any prettier or less pretty than the other one, but yeah. <laughs>
Okay, and then the derivative of the arc cotangent is going to be negative 1 over 1 plus u squared, and then again times u prime for the chain rule. Uh, we're, we're starting to see that a lot of these formulas that we're going to run into uh, in, our, in our situation here in calculus, they are going to start involving chain rule as part of the plan, just so you can process that without an issue. And then lastly here, we've got the arc cosecant, and this is going to be uh, negative 1 over the absolute value of u, and then u squared minus 1 in the square root, and then finally times u prime for the chain rule. So you, you, you can only sort of kind of begin to imagine how ghastly this is uh, to try to prove algebraically. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right here, and in the next video we are going to start applying some of these particular formulas. So take a pause and we'll see you in the next one.